Thanks for being here. I'm so glad you're spending a little time with me today. I am Dr. Joe Esposito. This is the show, in case you've never listened before. This is the show where we naturally get you well and keep you well. I want to give you the tools that you need to take care of yourself because it's a scary world out there in healthcare right now. Because it, if, if you've Unless you're living under a rock, you know that there's these big arguments with who's going to pay for the health care and, and who's going to get coverage and who's not. And Well, how about this? How about you take responsibility for your own health and learn the techniques you need to keep yourself healthy? Now, you're going to need doctors. Absolutely. You're going to need chiropractors, medical doctors, neurosurgeons, vascular surgeons, pharmacists. You're going to need all those people at some time in your life. I have no problem with any of that. But I want you to need them as little as possible. So you need to start taking control of your own health, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you natural ways to fix just about every health problem, and that's our topic today. So uh, we're going to start out with, well, this is an interesting one because I just had somebody do this the other day. In fact, one of my doctors, and uh, she came to me, and she had a a tooth problem, and she thought it was a a, a cavity coming on, had some pain, and didn't want to go to the dentist. And I said, go to the dentist. That's what dentists do. But she said, no, no, no. I said, she says, what should I do to try it? And I said, well, what can I do to help it? I said, try doing something called oil pulling. Now, if you've never heard about oil pulling, it's really cool because I've done it many times and it works really well. If you find yourself, uh, you maybe have some bad breath. You may have some aches and pains. Uh, I have a root canal, which I wish I'd never had done. But I have a root canal, and that's a low-grade infection. You'll always have a low-grade infection when you have a root canal. That's just by definition because you have this piece of metal stuck up into your gum. And the body is always attacking that metal as a foreign object. And so when my, when my uh, root canal acted up, I started doing oil pulling. So what you do is take about a tablespoon of extra virgin organic olive oil, use sesame oil as well, and swish it around in your mouth. And swish it, and, and swish it for about 20 minutes. Get it in, in, in between your teeth. And what it does is it's antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. So if there's a little bit of infection in there, if there's a little bit of, uh, like I had this chronic infection with my, with my root canal, it gets up into places that you just can't get with brushing and flossing, and it works wonders. And my doctor, Dr. Kat, she said, you know, I did that, and I thought I had a cavity, and I did it for a couple of days, and all the pain went away. So it's really a cool thing, but also sometimes you just can't get your mouth fresh. You can't figure out what's going on. Figure out maybe that it's you need some oil pulling. Now, there's two types of things I can give you bad breath. Well, three. One is you didn't brush your teeth. Number two is you might have an infection in your mouth, and that smells like an infection. If you smell somebody with bad breath and it smells like bowel, that kind of rotten, sewery smell, that's usually a sign of a digestive problem because what happens is the bowels are, food is sitting in your bowels and rotting, and uh, the gases get absorbed into your blood. They go up into your lungs, and they to where oxygen is exchanged in your blood, and the stinky smell comes out through the mouth. And so you really got to kind of figure out where the bad breath is coming from. Now, I'm Italian. If I eat garlic, of course, I'm going to have garlic breath. But if somebody comes up to you with that bowel smell, you got to start thinking digestive problems. Now, it could be gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux. Any of those can cause problems. And another issue with acid reflux, you hear me talk about that a lot if you're a regular listener, is the acid can come up and actually eat away at your gums and start to dissolve your gums. So if you're starting to see teeth being exposed, it could be from acid coming from your your stomach. It also could be from brushing too hard. Now, I did that when I was young. I used to brush and scrub my teeth. I was going to get them as clean as I could. Well, what I did is I wore away lots of my gums. So when dentists look at my teeth, they said, well, you probably brushed too hard. Get yourself an electric toothbrush. And years ago, I got an electric toothbrush. It's never got any worse. So that's another trick you can do as far as oral hygiene goes is use an electric toothbrush. It's going to be much more efficient than your hands and much softer. You're not going to wear out those gums because when you start wearing out the gum, that becomes an issue. But the oil pulling is really cool. Now, here's the thing with oil pulling. You don't want to swallow the oil because you just wished it around in your mouth and it's absorbing all the viruses, germs, bacteria, gunk that's built up in your teeth spit it out, but don't spit it down your sink because it's coconut oil. If you're using sesame oil, it might be different, but coconut oil hardens right around, I want to say 76 degrees. So if you ever buy a good coconut oil, you'll notice that it's hard in the jar in the winter and it's liquid in the summer. You can't figure out why, because it's a saturated fat. Now, this is a good saturated fat, not like meat, which is a bad saturated fat, But at a certain temperature, it's going to become firm and it's going to become liquid at a a higher temperature. So in your mouth, it's going to be liquid. But if you spit it down the sink, it's going to clog up your drain. 
don't do that. I've had a lot of people do that and say, well, Dr. Joe, you didn't tell me that part. Well, guess what? I just did. All right. Cold and flu season coming up. Yes. Okay. Some people, in fact, one of my coworkers here, I just, I went up to shake his hand today before I went on the air and he said, don't come near me. You got a summer cold. And I said, okay, so what do we do about that? Well, a couple of things. In my, in my second book, it's called A Prescription for Extreme Health. Uh, we talk about sugar, how it weakens the immune system. And in fact, a white blood cell can usually kill off like 14 bad guys until it dies off. If you drink something as simple as a can of soda, that same pathogen, that, that same white blood cell can only kill off one bad guy or pathogen before it dies. So when you eat sugar, you're really weakening your immune system. So the worst time of the year to eat things like cookies and cakes and fudge and donuts and, and sugary drinks is in the winter. And when do we do most of that? In the winter. And that's why so many people are sick from when winter starts till when winter ends. Actually, when fall starts till spring comes. Because the sugar is just blowing out your immune system. So instead of eating sugar breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, and sweet drinks. I want you to eat more green leafy vegetables. Boy, does that sound like a trade-off. Hmm, brownies or arugula? Hmm, let me think about that. I know you, the brownies are so much more fun and they taste better, but try this this winter. See if I'm right. I promise you I am. Of course I am. Wouldn't give you this information if I didn't. Now, there's a lot of research on vitamin C, and vitamin C is supposed to help with colds. Well, it does. However, you got to make sure it's pure vitamin C and not ascorbic acid. If you're taking vitamin C pills, read the bottle. If it says something uh, like berries or camu camu, I know camu camu, I love that. Camu camu is a really strong vitamin C. Those are good for you. But if it says ascorbic acid, that's only going to give you one eighth of the vitamin C molecule. And that's not what you're looking for. Folks, going to have to go to a break. Today, we're talking about ways to, fix, uh, ways to fix every health problem known to man. But I'm also going to open up the lines. So if you have a health care question, give us a call. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, lots of good information there. We archive our radio shows. If you want to order supplements, my book, send me questions, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Hey, listen, got to go to a break. Tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Show. Hey, thanks for being here. Glad you spent a little time with me. What we're talking about today are natural ways to fix just about every health problem. And uh, by the way, what, what I want you to do is follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. I just got a message actually from one of my followers and they want to know about uh, root canals because I mentioned a root canal, how I was unhappy about having a root canal because it always creates this low-grade infection. And what you can do instead is you can get a bridge. Now, you talk to your dentist about this, of course, and they take out the bad tooth and they put a, a fake tooth basically in and they, they anchor it to either side and many times the bridge is removable. Um, and that's what I wish I had done. Because that you could just take out clean and not have that problem. Um, but since I had that root canal, I, I do get headaches on that side of my head every now and then. And I don't know if it's related or not. But just so you know, there's options. Because many times the doctors say, well, you just have to have the root canal. Well, there might be an option. And that's something you should always ask your doctors, too, about anything. Even if you're my patients. What other options are there? I'll give you other options. So we're talking today about natural ways to fix all your healthcare problems. And if you have a question, give us a call. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. I love that. I say that and the lines light up. I always feel so powerful. Dr. Joe, boom, and the lights light up. Like me on Facebook, boom, Facebook lights up. Like me on Instagram, boom. Instagram. It's so much fun. Anyway, back to you doing things to get well. Magnesium is great for premenstrual syndrome. Many times I have patients come to my office and they come in. Again, I'm a chiropractor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition. So a lot of patients come to us, my team of doctors, for pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, car accident injuries. And they'll come up to us and say, well, Dr. Joe, I also have, and one of the issues might be menstrual cramps or PMS, and magnesium might be the key to helping that. It helps relax the body, and it helps with all sorts of cramps, muscle cramps, menstrual cramps. Foods like almonds, sunflower seeds, greens like spinach and broccoli are great sources of magnesium. So if you're eating a good plant-based diet, which I do recommend you do, chances are you're getting enough magnesium. But the problem is this. If you're eating a lot of sugar, your body's producing a lot of insulin. Now, insulin is released from the pancreas, goes into the blood, and it goes to the cells. And tell, it acts like a key almost. It, goes, it hooks into the cell and opens up the cell. So that sugar, glucose, can get into the cell and can be utilized as fuel. If you eat a lot of sugar your body 
uh, makes a lot of insulin, and part of the insulin molecule is magnesium. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, you're going to be much more prone to things like premenstrual syndrome, menstrual cramps, muscle cramps, because you're not utilizing your magnesium where it should be, relaxing muscles, you're us- utilizing it to produce insulin. The other thing is, and I talked about this a while ago on a show, is that if you have high blood pressure, we used to talk about salt being bad. Well, salt is not good unless it's air-dried sea salt or Himalayan salt, which is fine. But what I find is that when people eat a lot of sugar, they're using up magnesium to make insulin. The magnesium relaxes the blood vessels and helps open the blood vessels, which lowers your blood pressure. So sugar may be just as bad, if not worse, than salt when it comes to trying to manage your blood pressure. So we can give you medication to lower the blood pressure, but what if we got to the cause of your high blood pressure instead of just treating the symptoms? Make sense? So that's why our goal is to try to get to the cause of your healthcare problems. As a chiropractor, my team of doctors, we're always looking to get to the cause of your problem. All right, we're going to take some callers. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Odell, how can we make your day better? Yes, sir. I have a question about, I have a prostate cancer removed two years ago. What'd you have? I'm sorry? Prostate cancer removed. Prostate cancer. Okay. And what's your question? Uh, and I had no erection in the last two years. So what you can do? You had a what? I'm sorry. I couldn't understand you. No erection. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to, uh, okay. Hold on one second then. Okay. So what happens is after you have prostate cancer, many times men have issues performing And what we can do about that are several things. And this is not an uncommon question just for prostate issues. It's for lots of other issues as well. Number one, you want to make sure you have a good nerve supply to any organ. So it could be the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, the gallbladder. You always want to make sure the brain is able to send messages down the spine, out the nerves to the organs. So if you have a pinched nerve in the low back, let's say, that might cause back pain, leg pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain. It's the same nerve that controls your colon, sex organs, and bladder. That could lead to things like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, sexual problems. So many times patients come into our office and they're having trouble performing, men and women, in a romantic department, and it could be a pinched nerve in the low back. The second thing we have to look at is circulation, not just nerve supply to the organs, but circulation. And if you're eating a lot of sugar, you're not getting good magnesium, blood pressure can go up, you're cutting off the blood supply. But if you want to open up the blood vessels, you want to eat beet powder, like red beets. Now, you can eat the red beets, but they're high in sugar. So you kind of get a a pro and a con. But beets are high in something called nitrates. And nitrates, in 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 a plant form, convert into nitric oxide. And nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. So if you're going to do beet powder, what I do is I take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. These are two supplements I think everyone in the world should be taking every day. And I think everyone who's ever taken it agrees with me on that. They're two powders. I take a scoop of each. I mix it with coconut milk, almond milk, shake it up, and I drink it. And if you want to add some beet powder to that, when you do that, swish the, the Super Greens, the Essential Source, and the beet powder around in your mouth. Let it get mixed with the saliva. That's going to create nitric oxide and open up your blood vessels. Arugula, which is like a lettuce type uh, product, it's, it's a green, has about 10 times more nit- uh, nitrates than beet powder. So if you're going to have a salad, instead of using regular lettuce, try arugula. It's a little bitter. I actually like it. But arugula is going to really, because as you're chewing it, it's going to create more nitric oxide, really increase your nitric oxide production. So you want to check the nerve supply to the area, and you want to make sure you're getting enough nitric oxide. And you got to stay away from fructose and high fructose corn syrup because fructose and high fructose corn syrup through a chemical process prevent you from producing nitric oxide. And nitric oxide, of course, opens up your blood vessels. Okay, does that make sense to you? Let's see, are we still there? There we go. Oh, there you go. Okay, Odell? Thanks. Okay, thanks so much. I do appreciate the call. Bye. And folks, if you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. And we're talking today about natural fixes to all your healthcare problems. Now, before I I talked about vitamin C, and it was right before the break, and I want to go back to this. If you're going to take vitamin C, it helps your immune system, but you got to be careful not to take too much. Because if you take too much vitamin C, you reach what's called your bowel tolerance. And when you reach your bowel tolerance, you get diarrhea. So this is how much vitamin C you should be taking every day 
especially during cold and flu season. If you're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, if you're eating Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, by the way, those are available on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Also available on Amazon. A lot of my products and my books are on Amazon as well because a lot of people have Amazon accounts, so it's a little easier for you. But if you're going to take additional vitamin C, and again, if you're eating a good plant-based diet, chances are you won't need it, make sure it's pure vitamin C, take the dosage recommended, and see if you get loose stools. If you don't, double the dosage the next day. If you still don't, double the dosage the next day. When you start getting loose stools, cut back to the day before because that's what's called your bowel tolerance. You can only tolerate so much of it before you start getting uh, bowel issues, and taking more of it is actually going to be counterproductive. So don't take too much of it. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE, D-R-J-O-E, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Again, the products are available on my website, also available on uh, Amazon for, that, for, for you people who have Amazon accounts. Hey, listen, do me a favor. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Right back. I am so glad that you're here. I hope you have a good day. We're talking today about uh, simple natural fixes for most of your common health care problems. And so many people come to me every day, and I, I don't think a, a minute goes by sometimes where somebody says, hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? So I just started writing them all down one day, and I said, let me just do a show on this. And so I'm just throwing all these questions that I get all the time, just giving them out to you because chances are you have the same uh, questions that a lot of other people have. Uh, indigestion, of course, that's a biggie. And the number one reason my doctors see patients in our offices is for back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, car accidents, sports injuries. I always say I've never seen a car accident where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't. So there's always damage to your body if your car was damaged because you're not tougher than your car. The other, second most popular thing, popular if that's the right word, the reason we see patients is for acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. And a lot of times patients, you, you'll talk to them about it, say, no, I'm really here for the neck pain, doc, or the headaches, or the back pain. I want you to fix that. And then as I get talking to them, they say, well, you know, I do burp a lot. You know, I do have acid reflux. So I do take medication every single day for it, but it's just the normal type of acid reflux. Well, there's no such thing as normal acid reflux. So a couple of things I want you to consider. Number one, your stomach sits below a sheet of muscle called the diaphragm. So your stomach could be pushing up into your diaphragm. And if it is... You, there's a, a sphincter there, a valve called the lower esophageal sphincter, and the acid is coming up into your throat. Now, that can cause acid reflux, cause burning, cause ca uh, esophageal cancer, can cause a chronic cough, chronic sinus congestion. We talked about eating away at the gums. So you many times have to manually pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, and that's what my doctors do in my offices all day, every day. But if you need a quick fix, you can't come to see us right away. Peppermint works pretty well. Peppermint tea, peppermint oil, if you have essential oils, those seem to work pretty well. Also, celery, spinach, and figs are very good because they're loaded with minerals, and the minerals can help offset uh, the acid production in your stomach. It doesn't really neutralize the acid like a, like a medication does. It can help naturally lower the acid until you can get the problem fixed. But again, I want you to consider getting the problem fixed not just treating the symptoms. So a lot of this is kind of like a natural health first aid I'm giving you until you can get to come see us or somebody who knows what they're doing to get that stomach pulled down away from the diaphragm. But it's a really common issue. And I tell you, once you fix it, because I had it for years, life's a lot happier. Your stomach flattens out. Your voice comes back. Um, I've had a lot of singers from singing so much. They, they kind of irritate that valve and the acid comes up into their throat. They can't sing like they used to. You pull that stomach down and everybody's really happy. I'm going to go back to the callers. If you have a question, give me a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. Susan, how can we make your day better? Hi. Um, here's the deal. My friends and I are looking for specialists. No matter what the cost, we don't care what the cost is. With health care being so unknowable right now, we're just looking for specialists. Uh -huh. And we're looking for a root canal specialist, but it sounds like, you're saying don't ever, ever get a root canal. Root canal specialists are, don't exist. Don't do it. Get away from it. So we called the um, American Association of Endodontists, and we're in conflict right now. So sure. what, we, what do we do? Okay, do we well, that's a, a good question. Or not? That's a good question. Um, I wish I had never gotten mine done because it turns out I could have gotten a bridge. And I would have rather had the bridge than the root canal. Now, I'm not saying don't okay. do root canal. I'm not an endodontist. I'm not a dentist. But from my personal experience, 
I would have gladly gotten the, the, the bridge over the root canal. So you want to talk to your doctor and say, listen, is a bridge an option? And if the bridge is an option, what direction, you know, what's the pros and the cons of each one? And a good doctor will tell you, listen, the pros are this, the cons are this. But in my case, I could have gotten a bridge and I, and I didn't. Okay, so you're not saying a root canal is n- not an option. You're just saying, hey, look, there may be other things. There you go. Yeah, again, I'm not an ortho- okay. I'm not an endodontist or a dentist, so I don't want to, you know, preach how how to do their job. But always ask for options. Okay, and, thank uh, you. All right, my pleasure. Thanks for calling, folks. If you have a question, eight four 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 Doctor Joe eight four 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 D R J O E. By the way, that number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. So a lot of times people say, well, how to get in touch with you. 84444 Dr. Joe. Pretty simple. All right. We'll give you ideas on things you can do, little health tips, because these are questions I get asked all the time. Dr. Joe, what about, what about, what about? Weak and brittle nails. Once again, coconut oil comes into play. Get yourself some coconut oil and rub it into the nails, because a lot of times the artificial additives that they have in drugstore moisturizers uh, can have an adverse effect. Now, remember, your skin is a sponge. Anything that comes in contact with your skin is going to get absorbed. There are drugs, patches that you can put on your skin that absorbed a drug into your skin. So if you're putting on any type of artificial chemical, additive, preservative, aluminum, like an antiperspirant, it's going to get absorbed into your body. It has to. And so instead of trying, if you have weak, brittle nails, A, you got to find out why you have weak, brittle nails. Chances are you need to change your diet. You have a bad diet, probably a high acid diet. And if you take the coconut oil, just rub it into the nails every night. Just rub it in. It's real simple. It, 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 it absorbs pretty quickly. And I think you'll be pretty pleased in about a week or two. You'll start to see some good changes. Uh, so many callers. If you have a question, give me a call. 844-44-DR-JOE. 844-44-DR-JOE. May, how can we make your day better? Hey, I was just wondering if you have any um, suggestions for rheumatoid arthritis instead of, <clears throat> excuse me, NSAIDs or... Um, opiates for the pain. Sure, I understand. Now, I'm not against drugs. Please may, make sure of that. If I'm in pain, I hurt my back working out the other day, and I called one of my friends who's a pain management doctor, and I said, hey, doc, I need some medication. I can't move. She called me in some medication. I took it. I was able to walk again, and, I, and then I got to the problem, but I lifted too much weight. So I'm not against drugs, but for rheumatoid arthritis, you got to go on an anti-inflammatory diet. So what do I mean by that? There's seven foods I call them the seven deadly sins that you want to avoid. And the seven deadly sins are alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. My God, that's everything. So (laughs) that's everybody's diet. But trust me on this, May. What I'll do is I'll give you my 30-day challenge. I want you to listen to what I say for 30 days. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong. You ate well for 30 days. If I'm right, which I am, you'll see some changes. The inflammation will go down. The pain will get less. Mobility will improve. And you'll say, Dr. Joe was right. And then you just do this for the rest of your life. That's my challenge to you. So a couple of things. No alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. You want to eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Anything that isn't a fruit, vegetable, nut, or seed is not going to give you the best bang for your buck. Also, you need to eat more raw food, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, because raw, because raw food has enzymes in it. And enzymes are going to help break down that inflammation. So a salad at least once a day. I had two salads today, as a matter of fact. So salad, avocados, um, nuts, seeds, small amounts of those. Don't make a whole life out of those because you'll gain weight. Uh, The other thing I want you to add to your diet is as far as a supplement go is turmeric. Turmeric is, it's been around for centuries, decades, God, what's what's more than a century? Millennials? A thousand years? Okay, millennials. There you go. Johnny's giving me, okay, yes, there you go. Johnny's the smart one among us here. Uh, And turmeric is great. Take a little turmeric powder, but I want you to add just a little bit of black pepper to it. Because black pepper has a component in it called pepperine. And pepperine makes turmeric a thousand times more effective. And it's wonderful when you have rheumatoid arthritis. So let's do those, okay. th- let's do those three things. Also, I'd recommend Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source because they alkalize your system. And if you have RA, I know guaranteed 100% your body is too acidic. And you got to alkalize the system. So super greens, essential source, and turmeric as far as what to take. And I mix the turmeric right in with my super greens and essential source. And stay away from the bad foods and eat more raw food. Fair enough? All right. Any questions about it? Give it a shot. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? All right. Thanks, mate. Give me a call back in a month. Let me know how it did. Folks, if you have a question, i got to go to break. My number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. If you want to order Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, other supplements, my intestinal cleanser, soon-to-be cold and flu tonic coming out again for the season, 
That's on my website, drjoesposito.com or on Amazon. Also, we archive all our radio shows on, on uh, drjoesposito.com and videos of my lectures as well. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. I am Dr. Joe Esposito, the aforementioned Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about little tips to get yourself healthy. We just had a call around. She's about to take her call, and she hung up on us. Uh, maybe she got disconnected. But anyway, her question was she thinks she has a soy or chocolate allergy because when she eats them, she gets cold sores. And that's a great question because a lot of people get cold sores, and they don't know why, and I'm going to tell you why. And to add to your list, by the way, Jan, I'm going to add peanuts because peanuts, chocolate, and soy are high in something called arginine. And almost all of us, probably all of us, have some type of herpes virus in our body. There's over 100 different herpes, different herpes viruses. There's cold sores, there's genital herpes, there's shingles, and a bunch of other type of herpes viruses. But with cold sores, if you have a lot of arginine, it stimulates the virus to go into outbreak mode. And so if you, you're eating peanuts, chocolate, and soy and getting cold sores, you're absolutely right. It's due to the arginine content. So you've got to stop doing that. A little trick, though, what you can do is if you start to feel a cold sore coming on, get some baking soda and just make a real thick paste out of it and put it right over the cold sore because the baking soda can kill off the viruses. It alkalizes your system, really alkalizes the system, and it can cause the viruses to die. Now, a lot of people come to me in springtime and they say, well, Dr. Joe, every time I go to Braves game, I get a cold sore or a baseball game. Well, it's because you're eating peanuts where you normally don't eat peanuts. So you go to circus, you get a cold sore. So just notice what you're eating, and almost 100% of the time when you have an outbreak, whether it's genital, oral, shingles, it's because you exposed yourself to uh, something that's high in arginine. So you've got to stop that. And you can take mega doses of lysine as well because um, the lysine can help suppress it, but once it gets rolling, it's really hard to suppress. That's why the baking soda along with the lysine uh, would work well, and lysine helps suppress it. So that's a little trick there for you. So uh, in case you wanted to get, uh, get, if you're still listening, Jan, there's your secret. But a lot of other people I know benefited from that call. Uh, let's keep taking some callers. Tom, how can we make your day better? Uh, yes, I have a 13-year-old daughter, has jaw pain. I think it's TMJ. Can chiropractic care help? Oh, gosh. I treat so many TMJ patients over the years, and my, all my doctors do. The answer is probably yes. Because the TMJ has uh, nerve endings in it called proprioceptive fibers. Now, follow me on this for a second. If I remember way back from 40 years ago, there's 31 pair of proprioceptive fibers in your jaw and 32 pair in what's called your sacroiliac joint, your, your hip joints. And the reason proprioceptive fibers are so concentrated there is because you can't, you can't see yourself chew and you can't see yourself walk. So it tells you where you are in space. And so if the proprioceptive fibers are lined up properly, you're going to chew your food without biting your tongue. If she's having pain in the TMJ, chances are it's going to start affecting her bite, which is going to affect her chewing, which will start biting her, jo- her uh, gums and her, her, her lips. And it's going to affect her balance and her coordination because proprioceptive fibers tell you where you are in space. So to fix a TMJ is very important, not just because it hurts, but because it affects a lot of other things as well. So the chance is pretty good that if we get the TMJ and the sacroiliac joint lined up properly, she should be in good shape. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Yeah, we have several offices, folks, and if you and uh, you can go to my website, find out where we are. My doctors are all, all my doctors are handpicked by me and trained by me, so uh, we're pretty good at fixing these things. If you have a question, give us a call eight four 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 Doctor Joe eight four 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 D R J O E. Dan, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, how are you? I'm very happy. Happy you called. I'm doing well. Good. For the most part. Okay. Hey, What's your question? What I'm trying to figure out is, you know, I'm a 60-year-old male, and I can't get rid of my belly fat. I work out. I, I eat fairly good. But I just need to, how do I jumpstart my metabolism, or what do, what do I need to do to try to get rid of some of this? Okay, a couple of things. Number one is you got to cut out all your sugars, your breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, because you and I aren't 16 anymore. And even a 16-year-old is having trouble losing weight now, if you'll notice. But our metabolism does slow down, and we cannot process processed sugars. So breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas go into the liver— and I can give you the whole spiel. They use this glucose. If it's not used as glucose, it's stored as glycogen. If you're not burning up fuel like you used to, it converts into triglycerides, which gets stored as fat. So one of the things you have to just cut out is your bread, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas. Second thing is many times if our bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, it could be built up fecal matter, causing that poochiness to come out too. 
So okay. I, I created something called Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser. It's on my website, drjoesposito.com. It's also on Amazon. And if my bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, I know I'm not eating right. And so a lot of people will take the intestinal cleanser to kind of jumpstart their digestive system, clean out the bowels, and then get on a good diet. But you should be making most of your, most of your uh, diet consist of plants. If it's not a plant, it doesn't have any fiber, which means it's not cleaning through the bowels like it's supposed to. Okay. Okay. I so got you. That, oh, try try those right, things. Sir. I think you'll be happy with that. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate right. it. If you have a question, folks, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, somebody sent me a message on Facebook. Oh, by the way, like me on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. And the question was, they have anxiety. What do we do about it? Well, there's a couple of things we can do about anxiety. Number one is meditation works very well, and there's many different types of meditation. You can go to YouTube, look up meditation. You'll, you'll, you'll never, never be able to finish all the ways to meditate. But what happens a lot of times with anxiety is you have a digestive problem. Your stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into something called amino acids. Now, the amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain, and serotonin helps you calm down and focus. Tyrosine becomes dopamine, which is the neurotransmitter that gives you pleasure. Glutamine becomes GABA, which suppresses pain and suppresses a lot of other neurotransmitters as well. So if your digestive system isn't working, you're going to feel anxious. The other thing that happens is if the stomach is pushing up against the diaphragm and you're having acid reflux or heartburn or burping gas, the same nerve that helps control the stomach helps control the heart. It's called the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. And if the heart is not getting the proper nerve supply, your body goes into a state of anxiety. It thinks the heart is not working properly, and it says, hey, something's wrong here. I don't want to die. And so it could be a digestive problem leading to the anxiety for multiple reasons. Not digesting your proteins, not getting the right neurotransmitters in the brain, and the vagus nerve affecting the stomach and the heart. So when you change your diet, you remove the chemical stress. Change your diet for better, of course. When you get, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, you go to your chiropractor, you relieve the physical stress. Now, maybe you have a cavity. That's a physical stress. Go to your dentist. And so we want to get the body, we want to get the nervous system working, the digestive system working, and a good diet. And a good diet absolutely positively should include Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Those are the two minimum amount of nutrients, you should be, two supplements you should be taking every day. And those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, also avail on Amazon as well, uh, on amazon.com. Just look up Dr. Joe Esposito. Folks, listen, got to go to a break. You know what that means. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. I archive all my radio shows. I videotape my live lectures, and I put them on the website as well, drjoesposito.com. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you could be here. This is the show where we naturally get you well and keep you well. We give you the tools that you need to take control of your own health because we are in the middle of a, well, we're in the middle, we're in the beginning of a doctor shortage. I don't know if you know this or not, but everybody's talking about health care, health care. And by the way, when you hear about health care conversations about politics, it's not about health care. It's about insurance. Health care is you getting treatment either from yourself or taking care of yourself or from a professional. What they're talking about in Washington is insurance, how to pay for it. Well, I want to teach you the things so that you don't have to use your health care providers as much as possible. And when you do need them, it's going to be a lot less expensive. I can't remember. Well, I got friends that are doctors, so I can always call them if I have questions, though, too. Um, but I, I, I think you should have a, a crew of doctors that you trust. I know, like I said, I hurt my back working out the other day, and it was really bad. And I got adjusted, and I needed some intervention. I called up a friend of mine, and she's a pain management doctor, and she called me in some medication. I took the medications and felt better. Then I got adjusted, and we moved on. So I got to the cause of the problem, but I needed some medication in the meantime. And I have no problem with combining all these different professions to help you out. We've got a list of doctors we refer to at our offices uh, because we want to get you the best care possible. But back to this doctor shortage. Every doctor I know, doesn't matter what profession, chiropractic, medical, neurosurgeon, vascular surgeon, psychiatry, they're all saying the same thing. When do I get out of this mess? What have I got myself into? Because doctors don't want to be doctors anymore in most cases because they're not getting paid nearly what they were. The aggravation, the insurance companies are just ridiculous. I mean, filling out forms and credentialing, and we're already credentialed. You got to go for that. Anyway, I can go on and on about how insane it is. So 
my doctors are very happy working because we help get people well. In fact, I got a, a, a message the other day. I sent a friend of mine a happy birthday message on Facebook. And he says, you know, doc, listening to your show reminds me that it's not just treating patients. You need to love your patients as well. He says, thanks for reminding me of that. And it was kind of nice, maybe a little tingly there. So we do want to get people well. And our doctors, we really do like getting people well because we have the tools to do that. But I promise you what's going to happen next five or 10 years, doctors are dropping out left and right. Enrollment in medical and chiropractic schools are dropping like crazy. We got a problem. So what will happen is we'll have a shortage. Then more people come back into the healthcare profession and they'll be, it'll come up again. But there's going to be a gap, I promise, about 10 or 20 years where you're going to have to really take control of your own health. And that's what we're talking about today is tricks that you need to do to take care of your own health. So let's take some callers because that's what it's all about. Desmond, how can we make your day better? Yes, I, Dr. Joe. Uh, I uh, overheard you uh, talking about uh, acid reflux and all that. Yes. I've been having this, uh, this problem for quite a while. And uh, whenever I eat, uh, I would burp real loud and uh, uh, passing gas and all that stuff. Yes. Um, sometimes throwing up, you know. Sure. And even at times I would, uh, my, I would be very dizzy. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's the vagus nerve. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So what I, I had the same pr- problem you had for many years. And when I finally realized right. that you can actually physically move the stomach down away from the diaphragm, my doctors okay. are all trained to massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. That takes the stress off the diaphragm and, and the stomach relaxes and then it starts digesting the food. Then you got to change your diet as well. You got to stop eating those, the meats and the dairies and the coffees and the sodas and those heavy foods that are really hard to digest. And I don't think in 32 years of practice we've ever had somebody not respond to this treatment. Now, you might be the first one not to respond, but we get a pretty high success rate with this. Okay. So if you'd like to come see yeah. us, just go to my website. We can set you up a time to come in. Okay, doctor. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll listen off the air. Uh, I live in New York, so I would ah. like to know how to get it. Oh, yeah, it's true. I forget my show is all over the country, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what you can do is send me an email. And make, yes. see if I, I'll see if I can find you somebody up in your area. Just give me your zip code or your town you're in. What, what part of New York are you from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay, I'm from Hoboken. So, yes, I know, I know your oh. area well. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah, shoot me an email uh, to remind me of that. I'll see if I can find you somebody in your area. Okay. Definitely. Okay, Desmond, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Let's keep taking calls. Judy, how can we make your day better? Uh, hi. Uh, yes, I, I have, um, uh, I'm unable to take antibiotics. Um, they make me so sick, and I used to be able to, but this doctor gave me a 500 milligram um, Zithromax one time for sure. a sinus infection to uh-huh. take five, I think, that week. Uh-huh. After that, I could never tolerate antibiotics anymore, uh-huh. and I've got a cat scratch, and it needs to heal, and I, the doctors are getting so mad at me because... I won't take the antibiotics, and they make me so sick. Yeah, I'm the same way. I take steroids one time. I tried one pill. I threw up like crazy, and I said, I can't do this. So what you can do to— I can take steroids. I can take steroids. Oh, see, I can't. So what you got to do is a couple of things. Number one is build up your immune system from the inside out. So what I want you to do is I want you to start taking about two cloves of garlic— smash it up or put it through a garlic press. Let it sit for about five or 10 minutes because there's chemicals in garlic that have to interact with each other. And then eat it. Put it on a salad because I want you to eat raw food anyway. And do that at least once a day, maybe twice a day. Okay, because the garlic, now again, this is not replacing medicine, but this is antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. What you okay, can put... I'm wondering if it's going to upset my asthma. <laughs> uh, hopefully it won't. Uh, uh, if you have yeah, asthma, um, go off on a tangent here. I find that every asthma case I've ever treated, and I've treated a lot of them, the lower part of the neck and the upper part of the back, that's the nerve that goes into the bronchial tubes. So I find that with chiropractic care, we adjust that area, and in many cases, it opens up the bronchial tubes, and it helps the asthma tremendously. Okay. So that's a little trick for you. Um, But back to your boo-boo. And on top of it, you can try taking the garlic and mixing it with honey. Get a good organic honey. Because honey is also antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. So make a paste out of this and put it topically on the wound. Now monitor the wound. If you start getting streaks coming off the wound, red streaks, that means the infection might be going what's called systemic, and you need absolute medical care for that right away. Okay? But try the garlic, you know, once or twice a day. Smash it up. Let it sit. Mix it in with a salad. And then the garlic and the honey on top of it, and let's see if that helps. 
Okay, thank you. Right, give it a shot. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And the other thing, too, is whenever you have an infection, you got to build up your immune system. And the easiest way to build up your immune system is by not weakening the immune system. And you do that by avoiding what I call the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. I hardly ever get sick ever since I started taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. So you can get those. Those are two supplements. They're powders. You can get them on my website, drjoesposito.com. Just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. We also archive radio shows and videos of all my live lectures I put on my website as well. So if you're a visual person, they're also there as well. Hey, listen, got to go to a break. Tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Back. Hey, everybody, thanks for being here. This is the show where we naturally get you well and keep you well. We give you the tools that you need to take control of your own health. And that's what we're talking about today. We're giving you uh, little fixes to fix just about all your common health care problems. And that's pretty much what the show does all the time anyway. But I started writing down things that people ask me, either through they send me questions through my, fa- through my um, uh, website, drjoesposito.com. And if you have questions, you can do that. Uh, a lot of people call in, and a lot of people I just run into in the street. You know, we were t- I, was t- I was talking with Nikki the Screener just now, and uh, she said, you know, a lot of people listen, they don't call. And I said, yeah, but everywhere we go, people run into us and say, hey, Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe, I got this, I got this. So we're just kind of covering all that, too. And you know what? Nikki needs a phone call right now. She's Right, Nikki? She's waving. She's smiling. Nikki, Beautiful Nikki. She needs a call. If you have a health care question, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E, and see if we can get you on the air. So we're going through uh, pro- issues, and, and somebody called up about trying to lose belly fat. And the one thing I forgot to mention, and I, I, I got to go back to that, um, is you got to cut out the, the, the sugars, but you can eat more fat. Now, years ago, I remember hearing that you, if you ate fat, it made you fat. And when I was studying nutrition, because I have double board certified in nutrition, and I have a BS in nutrition, and I'm a retired dietitian, and I have award-winning books on nutrition— and a lot of universities are begging me to come teach nutrition, and I just don't have time, unfortunately. I wish I could. Maybe when I retire from, uh, from the – I don't think I'm ever going to retire. Though. I can't imagine not doing this. This is so much fun. Um, so we, talk, we got to talk about fats, and I was taught that fat has nine, grams of, nine calories per gram, and sugar and uh, protein have three, gram, three, three calories per gram. And so, of course, we thought more calories, more fat, and so you want to eat a low-calorie diet. But the problem was the craze of the low-fat diet, which was extremely dangerous. And that's when you started to see an increase in things like cancer and heart disease because we cut out the fats, but we started eating more sugars. And that's where the danger came in because sugar is really the thing that makes you fat. Now, if you eat enough fat, it'll make you fat too. But the fat has to be converted into human fat. And usually it goes through triglycerides. So if you're eating sugar, the sugar is broken down and the glucose is utilized in the body, in, 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 the, in the cells. Any excess sugar gets stored as glycogen. Glycogen is where we store energy. It's like your reserve tank of fuel. Once all the glycogen stores are filled up, your body still has to process these, cal- this, these sugars. So the body converts it into triglycerides where it gets stored as fat. And that's where the, the sugar makes your body store fat. So don't be afraid of things like avocados, olive oil, certain amount of nuts and seeds. Don't eat too many. Too much of anything is not, is not going to be good for you. But it'll boost your energy. It'll make you feel full. And you got to start to learn to love your veggies because veggies are going to be high in fiber. And fiber, when it gets into your body, swells up if you're drinking enough water and pushes everything through the colon and kind of cleans out the colon. So try to have veggies at least twice a day, minimum, and if you make your diet consist mostly of veggies, you're going to be amazed. It's going to clean out your colon, give you lots of nutrients. It's going to help you lose weight. And don't be afraid to have a salad and add some oil to it. Because here's the thing. There are four nutrients, vitamins A, D, E, and K. And vitamin D really isn't a vitamin, but anyway, it's a hormone. But either way, those four nutrients need fat to be absorbed. So if you're going to buy a fat-free salad dressing and pour it on your salad and you're doing all the right things eating the salad... You're not able to absorb a lot of the nutrients because you don't have fat present. So make sure you have some fat in your diet. Throw an avocado in there. Throw some olive oil in your salad dressing, some sesame oil, because the fat is going to help you absorb the nutrients. So don't be afraid of fat too much. But the other thing, too, is if you're not eating a good diet, the bowels are not moving. They should be moving two to three times a day. A friend of mine just said the other day, she said it took her about two years to get the bowels moving two to three times a day, and now they are. It took a while to kind of reset the body after several decades of the body not working the way it's supposed to, and then it started working again. On the topic of vitamin D, can't 
not talk about vitamin D. It's so important. Vitamin D helps build bone. So as people say, well, I'm going to take calcium because I have osteoporosis. I've never known anyone in all the years I've been practicing and seeing thousands, probably tens of thousands of patients that had osteoporosis or thinning of the bones and they took vitamin, uh, if they took calcium, it solved the problem. It doesn't work because bones are made up of a lot of different things. Calcium, magnesium, boron, vitamin D to absorb the calcium. And many times patients will say, well, my doctor prescribed me a vitamin D and I take 50,000 units a week. That's not what I'd recommend because your body can only absorb a, a, an amount of, cert, of anything. It doesn't matter what it is at a certain time. So if you give your body too much, a lot of it's going to go to waste. The other problem is when you start seeing prescription vitamin D, and again, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not telling you to take prescriptions or not, but I do see that prescription is vitamin D2. Vitamin D2 has to be converted into vitamin D3. So why not just take the form that's absorbable in smaller amounts throughout the week? So if it's summertime, I'm always driving my window open, my sunroof open. I'm always getting as much sun as I can. But once fall comes around, fall to spring again, I take 5,000 international units of vitamin D every day, vitamin D3. And I take it with something fatty, so an avocado, olive oil, nuts, so that it can be absorbed. But vitamin D is not only for bones. We're also finding that it, it can help relieve menstrual cramps. In fact, there was a small study done who suffered severe menstrual cramps. They experienced significantly less pain when given high doses of vitamin Ds five days before their expected uh, menstrual cycle. So about 5,000 international units of vitamin D2, not vitamin D3. Make sure uh, Vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. Make sure you're taking the right kind and take it with something fatty. And that's going to help your skin as well. Because many times patients come to me, and again, we're chiropractors. They come to my doctors for neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain. But they'll also talk to my doctors about, I've got dry skin. I've got flakiness. I've got eczema. Many times you're not eating enough fat to make the cells work. So you really got to increase your fat content, and that helps. Now, as a chiropractor, a lot of people come to us, of course, for pain. And so you might have neck pain or back pain or shoulder pain. And so, we, of course, we recommend chiropractic care for pain. It's the most obvious uh, reason to get chiropractic care, although you learn from this show there's a lot more reasons. But we also got to make sure you're getting the right diet. Because you can be eating foods that can be increasing your pain. One of those foods is artificial sweetener. And Johnny, my board operator, and I were just talking about that before we went on the air. And he was doing a fiber drink. And he found out that it had artificial sweetener in it, aspartame. And it snuck it in there. And so he immediately, you know, after listening to the show and working with me for many years, he threw it, threw it away and he was done. But aspartame or artificial sweetener can actually increase your pain levels. Sugar can increase your pain levels. Constipation can increase your pain levels. So you come to us for chiropractic care. My team of doctors work on you, but you need to work with us as well. You need to get the right foods in your body. At least, absolute minimum, take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. These are two powders. I mix them with coconut milk, ramen milk. In fact, I just uh, drank some right before I came on the air. And it gives you the nutrients that your body needs to function uh, the best it can. Then you add a good diet to it. Then you add chiropractic care if you need it to realign the vertebrae and take the pressure off the nerves. Then you can add uh, supplements if you need to. Every patient that comes in, I do a nutritional workup on them and find out what deficiencies they have. And so piece by piece, you start to put together a health care plan. How about we call it Joe Obama Care? How about that? Joe Obama Care is a health care plan, not health insurance, a health care plan. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a question, give us a call. The number here is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. My website, we archive radio shows. We videotape my live lectures, do a lot of live lectures. Come out to my live lectures, by the way. Look at my list on my website, and uh, you'll find out where we are. A lot of good stuff there, drjoesposito.com. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Glad you could spend a little time with me. I do appreciate that. Everybody's so busy, and I, I really, I'm, I'm so honored when you take time out of your day to be here, and, and I do appreciate that. And also, I appreciate when you go to my website and listen to the archive radio shows and videos of my live lectures that I've done over the years, uh, because that tells me that you're interested in wanting to get well and stay well. And, and we have millions of hits on our website between the videos and the audios. And, and, and it's really, I'm just humbled. I, I just think it's so great that people do that. And hopefully you're getting a lot of good information, because today we're talking about uh, natural fixes for just about everyday, uh, common everyday health issues. And uh, I was talking about pain before, of course, and as a chiropractor, my team of doctors, we treat a lot of pain patients uh, with chiropractic care. 
And sometimes people are so deficient in nutrients that we got to get them on a good diet. And of course, we get them on Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. But if you have a lot of muscle cramps, you might want to try uh, Epsom salts. It's an old uh, remedy there, but it's high in magnesium. And it also works for eczema as well. So skin rashes, if you soak in a, a bathtub a little Epsom salts and just follow the directions on the bag, uh, the magnesium gets absorbed into the body, relaxes the muscles. So it's really a neat little trick. In fact, uh, we had a patient a while ago, well, several years ago now, uh, she was so morning sick. She was throwing up. She couldn't put anything in her body, and I, I, I thought we were going to lose her. I mean, she was so sick and shaking, and so I told her husband to get her, take her home and put her in a bathtub because she couldn't even put an ice chip in her mouth. She was throwing up so bad. And by sitting in the bathtub, the water was absorbed into the muscles and into the skin, and she blossomed like a flower. So when you put something in your bath, it's going to be absorbed into your skin, especially if it's a hot bath or a shower. It's going to open up your pores. So make sure you're only using natural products in your bathtub and your shower. I use something called Castile soap. It's a liquid soap. You can also use something called black soap. Um, that's It's called a black soap. And you can use that because it's natural. And when the pores open up, you're going to be absorbing nutrients as opposed to absorbing toxic chemicals. So if you have these uh, frilly, smelly bath salts and these bubbles, these can be very toxic getting into the body. Again, it's not going to kill you in one shot. But I want you to do everything you can every time you can to keep yourself healthy because there's going to be things you don't have control over. There's going to be car exhaust. There's going to be new car smell. There's going to be air fresheners, carpet cleaners, uh, people that wear perfume, cigarettes. You can uh, avoid some things, but these are the things you can avoid. So if you're having a lot of muscle spasms, even with high blood pressure, you might want to consider Epsom salts bath to get the magnesium into your body. Let's go back to the callers. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. And that number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Margaret, how can we make your day better? Well, thank you for taking my call, Dr. Oh, Joe. You are welcome. I, uh, in listening to you just now, um, the Epsom salts uh, bath, I do that. But I wanted to find out from you what is good for a whole body cleanse and that not to get the magnesium in, but to get the uh, bad metals and things out of your body. Right. Well, what we do at our office is we do hair analysis. And we can do this anywhere in the country. You can send us a piece of your hair. You can call the office. We'll tell you how to do it. And we, we, we send it off to a lab. We get an analysis, and we can tell what heavy metals you're, you're, you're exposed to. Um, some people it's uh -huh. aluminum. Some people it's mercury. And those are the two most common ones, of course. And then we can kind of customize it. But as far as mercury goes, what you can do is eat cilantro. Okay. So cilantro, for some reason, it, the, the metal is bound to the cells with an electrical charge. And the cilantro breaks that charge where the metal is bound to the cells and then releases it. And then you also want to make sure your bowels are moving two to three times a day. So if you're going to do right. cilantro every day, which is a great idea, um, you also want to maybe take Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser unless you have a really good diet and the bowels are cleaning because I don't want you dumping things into the bowels and then getting reabsorbed again. Okay, so great. So I would do the hair test to find out what you're high in, but just as a more of a generic approach, you just put cilantro in your salad every day. Okay, so I could make an appointment and you all could do a hair analysis Absolutely. For me. Yep, not a problem. We do it all That's day, every day. Wonderful. Okay, right. Dr. Thanks. Joe, thank you so much. You're welcome, Margaret. Thanks for calling. Ah, it's always so nice to hear happy voices like that. Folks, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. So we're talking about every, little tips that you can do for every, everyday health tips, the things that you can do to get well. Uh, we talked earlier about arthritis, pain, and inflammation. Turmeric works really well. Just make sure you're adding black pepper to it because if you add a little bit of black pepper to your turmeric, it's about 1,000 times more effective. Pretty cool. Urinary tract infections. A lot of people come in with urinary tract infections. And you got to, first of all, you got to straighten out your diet. There's a reason why you get them. And it could be contact. Uh, women especially get it more than men because the urethra is a lot shorter in women than it is with men. And so bacteria can get up the urethra. So one of the tricks that you might have heard people talk about is cranberry juice. And you can do cranberry juice, but make sure it's pure cranberry juice and not cranberry juice cocktail. Because cranberry juice cocktail is loaded with sugar. And the sugar actually feeds the infection and can make it worse. Now, pure cranberry juice uh, doesn't taste very good. So you want to dilute it with water, and you might want to add something like stevia to it, uh, which will help tremendously. 
The other thing that'll help improve your immune system, of course, cutting out the sugar, cut out the animal products. Because you, the, the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener are the seven deadly sins. And, of course, the animal products are meat and dairy. you got to be careful with those. Because if you're eating commercial ones, chances are they're loaded with antibiotics. And the antibiotics can actually weaken your immune system over time. They're important to have. You need antibiotics. But if you've taken them in small doses over a lifetime, when your body finally does need them, that's where the problem comes in. So just be careful with that, and if you're going to do the um, uh, uh, the cranberry juice, make sure it's the pure organic ones. <sighs> Somebody just sent me a message. I shouldn't answer it, but I will. Dr. Joe, what about a hangover? And I shouldn't answer this because you shouldn't be drinking. But if you are drinking, here's the thing. When you drink, your, body, your, body, your brain releases a chemical called vasopressin. It's also called antidiuretic hormone. And right now, your brain is releasing it. And what happens is when you do that, you, 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 you release the, the, the vasopressin and it prevents you from peeing. You're producing it right now. When you drink alcohol, it shuts down your body's production of vasopressin or, su or suppresses the, the production of vasopressin, and then you pee. Do you ever notice how you drink one beer, you pee out three? Where those other two beers come from? Your body is giving up its own vital fluids to flush the alcohol out of the system because alcohol destroys brain cells and your brain controls everything. As a chiropractor, my job is making sure the message is getting from the brain down the spine, out the nerves to the body, and back up again. And if you're drinking, you're affecting the brain. You're destroying brain cells. And now your body is not going to function at 100%. So here's my rules on drinking. I don't drink. I haven't had a drink since I was about 28 years old. I had a glass of champagne. I was in Anguilla, this lovely island in the northernmost of the Lesser Antilles. And had a glass of champagne, felt awful that night and the next day, and I said, I'm done. And I never drank again. So I just didn't like the way it made me feel. So if you're going to drink, you have, for every drink you have, you have to have three glasses of water. you got to rehydrate your body. Second thing is you got to replace the nutrients that are being flushed out of your system. So something you might want to try is coconut water. It's a very powerful hydrator. It's going to be the key if you're going to go out dr drinking. It has five electrolytes that your body needs, potassium, sodium, magnesium, phosphorus, and calcium. The body loses a lot of potassium when you drink, and if you have a banana to go with it, the banana can help replace some of that potassium. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE, D-R-J-O-E, my website, drjoeesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram as well. If you want to order Super Greens, Essential Source, my books, my colon cleansers, more information are on the website, drjoeesposito.com, also available on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. Folks, got to go to break. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, everyone. Thanks for being here. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're listening to the right show because we give you practical advice for health care that really, really works. And if you have a health care question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. We're talking today about natural ways to fix your everyday common health problems. Uh, you've heard me talk about apple cider vinegar in the past if you've listened to the show before. And apple cider vinegar is really good for multiple reasons. Number one, uh, it's an acid, but when it gets into your body, it becomes alkaline. So it alkalizes your system. It's loaded with probiotics, which are good bacteria. It can actually help with acid reflux. Now, again, fixing acid reflux is more important than treating the symptoms. And many times the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm. We need to gently massage the stomach down away from the diaphragm. So that's the key to fixing acid reflux is physically moving it, but temporarily the apple cider vinegar works. Also, it can help increase your metabolism. A lot of people report that when they take apple cider vinegar, they feel like they're losing weight, and they do. So I personally don't like drinking apple cider vinegar. It's too strong for me. I don't like the flavor. So what I do is when I make a salad, I'll put apple cider vinegar on it. Now, a little trick, um, I like to make coleslaw as one of my salads at least once a week. And just get some cabbage, and you can put it through your food processor and, and chop it up small. You know, you can buy it already pre-chopped, too, folks. If you're really lazy, you can buy pre-packaged coleslaw. I think it was uh, one of the big stores was $0.88 cents a bag. I mean, that's how inexpensive it is. So what I would do is I had some um, – I'm a vegan, so I would add uh, vegan mayonnaise to it. And then I'd add a couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of salt, and then I add nutritional yeast. Now, nutritional yeast is loaded with B vitamins, now, I don't eat animal products, so I get my B12. My colon produces B12, 
but I also get it from nutritional yeast. Now, if you're a meat eater, you're going to get B12, but did you ever wonder why animal products have B12 in them? Because when animal products starts to rot, the bacteria start digesting the meat or the animal product, and it spits out B12 as a waste product. So that's why you're getting B12 when you eat meat, but you don't get it from plant. You can get it from some plants. Uh, but nutritional yeast is great. If you've never tried it, I'm going to recommend you, you try something new. In fact, I was just talking to Johnny, my board operator, and he said, every day I try to learn something new. He says, I don't go to sleep until I learn something new. And he says, I always know when I'm, when I'm working on your show, he says, I don't have to worry about learning anything new that day. <laughs> I got plenty stored up. But nutritional yeast is a powder. And it looks like... Uh, Kind of, well, it looks like a yellow powder, like yellow mashed potatoes, I guess, like a powdered mashed potato. And it kind of has a cheesy flavor to it, for lack of a better word, a nice savory flavor. And so I'll add nutritional yeast, uh, uh, cabbage, uh, apple cider vinegar, a little ve- vegetarian mayonnaise, or you can use regular mayonnaise if you eat animal products. Mix it up, easy, quick, extremely inexpensive, very filling, and good for you because cabbage is very high in what's called probiotics, good bacteria. And the good bacteria you need in your body. And good bacteria can produce things like vitamin K2. Now, we just had a caller earlier, and uh, she, she didn't want to come on the air. But the body needs K2, vitamin K2, not regular K from green leafy vegetables, but K2, to help the body process calcium properly. And so that's why a lot of cultures in the world have fermented vegetables as part of their diet. Kimchi, sauerkraut. In the United States, we don't have that. And if you buy sauerkraut, it's already been pasteurized, so the nutrients and, and the good bacteria have been destroyed. So by eating cabbage, it's very high in um, probiotics. That's why cabbage ferments so easily. You want to make sauerkraut? You take cabbage, shred it up, add some salt, press it down, let it ferment. Now, where does it come from? The bacteria in the cabbage start to multiply and create that fermentation process. So a coleslaw is something very, very good for you. And it's also high in indole 3 carbonyls, which helps to fight cancer. So cabbage is good for you. It's a cruciferous vegetable. So the cabbage is great. It's very inexpensive. You can make it and just put salad dressing on if you want. You don't got to get fancy. But try the nutritional yeast. It's going to give you B vitamins, which will give you a burst of energy. So after lunch, if you're tired all the time, chances are you're eating things like the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So if you have a coleslaw salad or some cabbage in your salad with some apple cider vinegar and some fat in there, like a mayonnaise or some uh, olive oil or some coconut oil, you're going to feel really full, you're going to feel really good, and you're not going to fall asleep in the afternoon. That alone is going to save you money on coffee, if nothing else, because you're drinking your coffee at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, got to have your coffee. When you stop making yourself sick, you'll start to get well. And you make yourself sick by having a, you make yourself well by having a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. It's just that simple. So try it. See if I'm right. You want to throw get really crazy? Throw an avocado in the salad. That'll give you more fat. Maybe some nuts in there, some walnuts, or uh, I, I like um, sliced almonds. You'll be amazed how much better you feel, how much money you'll save, how much better you'll sleep, how much your pain will decrease, how much better you'll feel like you're losing weight. Your brain will work better by not poisoning yourself. It's not hard. It's really easy. So try that. I think you'll be really happy with it. Apple cider vinegar can also be used on uh, pimples. If you have blemishes on your skin, it works wonders. They have a little bit on the spot, and you should notice improvement probably even overnight. Because the apple cider vinegar has probiotics, which are good bacteria, which can fight the bad bacteria and the infection. And it's an astringent. It tightens up your skin. Just when you do apple cider vinegar, though, make sure it's raw, organic apple cider vinegar. Because if it's not the raw, organic kind, you're not going to get the best bang for your buck. If you have anemia, of course, green leafy vegetables are going to be great. Because there's two types of iron. Anemia is low iron. There's two types of iron. There's heme and non-heme. Heme iron comes from animals. It's blood. Like, you know, um, hemolytic, okay, means blood. Um... So the heme iron comes from the animal's blood. Non-heme comes from plants like green leafy vegetables or red beets. Anything red or green is going to have non-heme iron in it. And if you're taking the the heme iron or you're taking a supplement, sometimes they actually use iron like that comes from the ground, can be very constipating. It's much better if you take the non-heme iron, which comes naturally with vitamin C, and the vitamin C helps you absorb that. Now, here's a little trick as well. Gentlemen, I want you to donate blood 
or go check to see if you can donate blood. If you can, I want you to do it because here's the thing. We men can and women, if they're post uh, uh, past menopause, can build up too much iron in their blood. And now you have too much iron in your blood and the iron can actually oxidize. And when the iron oxidizes, it can increase your risk of heart disease. So what I do is every chance I get, I stop in, I got my carry my little card with me and I stop in and I donate blood. And they check your iron for you. They give you kind of a little uh, basic blood test as well, which is not a bad idea either. Uh, get tested. A friend of mine was a, uh, is a nurse, and, and she would say if she started dating somebody, she would always get them to find out if they donated blood because it was find out if they had any problems going on. But donating blood can help lower your iron levels. Folks, got to run. Uh, if you have a question, you can always go to my website, drjoesposito.com, which is Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Send me the questions. The number 844-44-DR-JOE rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. And if I think everyone should be ordering Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're available on my website, drjoesposito.com, also available on Amazon. Hey, listen, thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. Get you next time. Friends about the show.